How you doing, my friend? Doing good, buddy. How are you? I'm just, I'm just great. Thanks. Uh, how was training and uh, how's your night been going? Training was a bitch and uh, my, I'm done training. So my night's getting better. <laughs> <laughs> well, what is training? Never a bitch, right? Right. Exactly. That's good. That's good. So how are things in Detroit at the moment? I mean, you got to think our, our weather's just been fucking crazy. Excuse me. Yeah. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty fucking humid here. So training, you know, it's damn near hundred degrees the last, what fuck the last week and the humidity seems like it's damn near a hundred too. So definitely losing a lot of water weight. So I've got to rehydrate. I've been drinking almost two gallons of water every day <laughs> just to keep the hydration up, you know? Of course, of course. Now, I mean, you fight a heavyweight. So um, what's the, what's the most important factor when, when fighting a heavyweight? Is there much weight cutting at all? What, where you normally stand with that? Well, usually with bare knuckle boxing, uh, weight cuts, never an issue, heavyweights, heavyweight, but, uh, that was here in America, you know, just obviously call it as it is America's full of a bunch of pussies, man. So you go to different States and they all have different fucking qualifications. So you go to some States like Mississippi place like that. And they don't give a fuck heavyweights, heavyweight. Uh, you go to new places like Alabama, and Nebraska and all the other places. And they want to play the rules by MMA, this ain't MMA, so we don't have a heavyweight class of 265. So, you know, depending on what, what state you go. So I'll be knocking Sam out in uh, Nebraska, so they want me under 265, so I need to make sure I'm walking around at 265. I start camp at about new 295. So, you know, obviously it's a nice little journey down to 265. Just make sure that we lean out and eat proper, and you know, so it's a lot of uh, just nutrition. You know, tra- training doesn't ch- change, but uh, nutrition changes. Perfect. Uh, before I go any further, I appreciate you taking the time out of your night to hop on here and uh, let me interview you here. I know you probably probably had a long day and a long night of training, so I do appreciate it. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, now, talking a little bit about, I mean, it being summer, I mean, we're in August, and, you know, we both know we're around in the same area. Uh, you know, it's hot as hell. It's been humid all summer long. So, you know, a guy like yourself, when you don't have a fight book, what is your drink of choice if you do drink? Well, my drink, my drink of choice is sparkling water. I do not drink alcoholic beverages, so uh, stuff like this, little uh, flavored sparkling waters, man. So that's that's my go-to, and uh, that's my jam. I drink about a gallon, two gallons of that a day, and that's pretty much all I do. If I if I break away from that, it's uh, some iced tea, but uh, that's usually rare. So I, I usually just stick with my sparkling water. Oh, the sparkling water is so good. You got to have yeah. the, uh, I don't know if you buy them, but I don't know. I don't know if you have no, uh, no frills in the, in the States. You probably don't. It's like more of a Canadian thing. Uh, but okay. Like they come in these like really tall, skinny bottles. Kind of the same thing. They're like a sparkling ice. Uh, and they'll have like the pineapple. They'll have like this pineapple. They'll have the orange. Oh, it's so good. It's always yeah. good when you have that like water choice. Like that flavored water is always a better choice than pop or get other things like that. Yeah, no, I totally agree. Usually I uh, do, before I found the sparkling water, I was doing, you know, gallons of water and I'd have to put limes and lemons and everything in it to try to make it not so bland. So flat water is just not my thing. So I'm digging the sparkling water from now on. Well, it definitely helps with just when you're, when you're training, when you're cutting, you're trying to get into the weight class, whatever you're fighting at. I know for myself, uh, I'm just, I'm going back into training at the end of August. So I have to start a cut. So yeah, I, I hear you, man, there. And, uh, you know, I, I get that. And, you know, it's hard to stay away from all the other good stuff for sure. For sure. Oh yeah. Yeah. When I don't have to worry about my weight class, then, uh, I can beef up, put more muscle on, you know, train hard six days a week. And then on Sundays, it's usually about a 20,000 calorie intake day. So just to reset the system and then get back to training again on Monday. So I can't do that when I got to hit under 265. You know, I got to get down here with these little guys, these little 230 guys like Sam Shoemaker, you know, six, four and 230 pounds, you know, he's the size of my leg. So, you know, and these guys think they, you know, they think they hit hard. They hit, they hit a pad on the wall and it says that they hit hard, but yet the dudes only knocked out two people and it wasn't even a clean knockout. So, so yeah, you know, it's always fun. Got to come down and show these little guys what it's all about. For sure. For sure. Now I just want to jump right into it here now. So, you know, if, if everything is correct, everything I've heard about you is correct. You have been fighting since 2006. So that kind of puts you about what, 27, 28. Right now, age wise. Yeah. Our fights. I'm sorry. What, what are you talking? How many professional fights I've had or how old I think I professional fights, like 
uh, since you've been fighting, I think I, if I'm correct, it was like around 2005, 2006. Right. Yeah. So I have a lot of MMA fights that are not on sure, sure dog and sure dogs kind of a joke. Like if you know somebody there, you can get your shit put in there. So when I first started, we were doing like gymnasiums, high school gymnasiums, things like that, which they don't qualify anymore because we don't know the promoters and all that jazz. So I've got roughly around 35 MMA fights and, uh, bare knuckle fights i started bare knuckle fighting about seven years ago now almost seven and a half years ago in europe it wasn't even legal here in the u.s so i started there and uh had a, had a lot of fights over there fought some of the best they had and then now i'm back over here in the states well that that i mean that's that's such a long time ago does it feel like it's been that long or is it just time flies like you know how it goes man time flies you know time flies when you're having fun so definitely uh i, I wouldn't do it any other way though i all these guys in America, you know, even the toughest guys we have today, you know, these guys are just now learning, you know, the Joy Beltrons, people like that. They're just learning the sport, you know, and they're they're getting to their fourth and fifth year. I'm on my seventh year. So when I came back over here, I was on my fifth year. So, you know, this sports, you know, a lot of people need to learn how to do it. You know, this ain't boxing. It's not MMA. It's not, you know, Muay Thai. Like, you got to be smart about how you fight and how you place punches, and you got to be a intelligent on how you, you 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 utilize your tools per se so uh yeah it's it's uh it's been a journey but i wouldn't change it because i obviously like i said i learned from the best over in the uk and no matter what anyone wants to say you know you know i love dave feldman i love us but you know the bkfc but you know they always say all oh, the minor leagues over in the uk well the minor leagues were the only leagues in the entire world for a long time so, you know, we have better athletes here in America. I, I can I concur with that. But the, some of these guys don't need to be athletes, man. Some of these dudes are just, you know, some of the guys that I fought over there were 10 and 0 with 10 knockouts and they look like butterbean and they just knocked everybody out. And, mm -hmm. you know, I was able to beat guys like that. And, you know, it was, a, it was a big deal. And I learned from the best, some of the best over there and them travelers and the gypsy travelers and the Irish fighters and, and the Welsh, like they don't play, you know, and the Scotsmen, they don't play. So, the, definitely learn from some of the best for sure no this has always been has fighting always been something that you've always wanted to do or is it was it just something a hobby and turn into a gig what what was it no well <clears throat> technically i started boxing at five and it was just something my dad put me in just because i was wild and rambunctious and got in a lot of trouble Started boxing at five, kickboxing at 11, and just kind of took on a life of its own. I mean, I did play football and wrestle and stuff in high school, got scholarships to go play ball and wrestle in college. But at the end of the day, I just levitated back to fighting. I'm not uh, – sounds bad. I say it all the time, it sounds bad, but I'm not a very good team sport guy because uh, if we're on the same team and you don't do your job, we lose a game because you fucked up. Like, I'm the kind of guy that's going to snatch you up after the game. Like, I, I'm just bad like that. So when, uh, you know, I have falters, like my last fight, I fought Frank Tate. And, uh, you know, everyone gives all kinds of excuses. Oh, they changed your opponent four days out, this and that. And he was different de demographics as far as his height and everything. At the end of the day, man, I just got my ass kicked. You know, I didn't show up and I had a, <clears throat> had a flat night. And that doesn't take away from Frank Tate at all. The guy's a great guy, great fighter, hits real hard. And, uh, you know, I just had a bad night. But at the end of that night, I can only look at myself in the mirror and say, hey, that was your fault. You know, Frank Tate didn't beat me. I beat me. You watch that fight. I, Josh Burns didn't fight. I didn't throw punches. I think I maybe throw 13 the entire three rounds. Like, it was my fault. So I like things like that rather than, you know, doing a team sport where, I could have done everything right, but because some other some other Yahoo screws up, then it's their fault. So, so I, I've always levitated to singular sports like wrestling, fighting, and that's just my thing. Awesome. And you know, looking at MMA, MMA and combat sports has really t taken off as more. It's been recognized as more now as a sport versus before. It had a lot of stigma where it's just a bunch of thugs that just want to fight, and now it's become such a respected sport. You being a father, was there any point you trying to get your, your kids involved with that um, open opportunities for them? Or were you more trying to shift that away from that kind of life? Well, you know, to be honest with you, I, I don't really care. Whatever my kids want to do, I'll support them. In, you know, obviously, I wanted my boys to wrestle. You know, I always want my sons to wrestle. That's a big deal to me. Uh, and to be honest with you, so far, none of them have wanted to wrestle. So, you know, Ed, that's kind of hard, pulls on the heartstrings a little bit. But, you know life ain't about me. You know, their lives are about them, what they choose, what they love, where their passions are. So uh, as far as the mixed martial arts game now and, and MMA now, 
it is such a refined sport and it's so much more advanced than when I became, you know, Mark Coleman was like a big brother to me. He was the first generation. I consider myself like a second generation. And now we're in that third, fourth generation where it's just, you know, these guys that come in, they, they're not just okay at certain things. They're great at jujitsu. They're great at boxing. They're great at wrestling. Like they, they know they have to have those fundamentals. And, uh, you know, so it's, it's, probably a, it's really competitive and I would like to see my kids compete, but you know, like I said, my kids are going to do what they want to do and wherever their hearts drive them, you know, I'm going to support them. You know what I'm saying? Of course. And I mean, being a father and being a mixed martial artist and being a combat sports athlete, um, what is probably the hardest thing uh, balancing the two? As far as, as far as what being a fighter? Well, just being a fighter and being a father, what is the hardest thing um, in the mix? Well, the hardest thing as far as, you know, being a fighter is that it pulls you, people don't realize that it pulls you away from family. It pulls you away from events and things of that nature. You know, like my son, he just started tackle football today and with pads, it was first day with pads. And I got to get my training and I got to fight on the 10th. So I, you know, drive, it's damn near 45 minutes from my house get down there. I can only stay down there for about a half hour out of, for an hour and a half practice, you know, the first half hour. But, uh, you know, I still make myself known in my presence there, but, but I can only stay about a half hour. And those are the kind of things that you miss, you know, as a parent. And it's, it's that, it's that dilemma in your head, you know, do I want to be 80 years old and saying, Oh man, I wish I should have, could have, would have, or, you know, and it sounds really bad, but with my kids, my kids are always going to be there. And I'm gonna always be, do whatever I can for them. So I just think the benefit of me being a successful fighter or being a role model um, in what I do is going to impact them and show them that dedication and hard work can get you whatever you want in this world. And, you know, at the end of the day, I'm 43 years old and I'm still competing with these young bucks, you know, and, you know, as they say, <laughs> the old saying, you know, beware, be aware of the old man and the young man's sport, you know, and uh, I guess I'm moving into that, that realm of being that old man. And I'm still knocking these bucks out. So, you know, at the end of the day, I want my kids to see that, you know, no matter age, it, all that don't matter, man. If you put your heart to it, your mind to it, and you dedicate yourself, you can achieve anything. Yeah. Can you please explain the fountain of youth here? What is it like? What is it that what's your secret? <laughs> to be honest with you, I, I think the only thing that I've really like my my girl, my fiance and I, my my exes and all my kids, everything we've pretty much, my father, we've pretty much come down and boil it down to uh, the only thing that I do different in my life than most other athletes is I don't drink. I've never drank. I think I drank six times in my entire life and uh, I, I don't do drugs, you know, even, you know, and everybody, you know, marijuana, you know, everyone experiments, stuff like that. I just never was the kid that ever experimented and I never had the desire or the, you know, the, the pull to go drink and party. And I think that stuff, people don't realize how bad that ages them. And, uh, you know, I've always, you know, I've always been in the gym, but, you know, my biggest weakness has always been food. So <laughs> there's times that I've blown up over 315 pounds and I was a fat ass, you know, and I had, you know, had to bring myself back down and you find yourself uh, finding sometimes as a fighter, in my opinion, you, depression is kind of a big deal. It's kind of, it's very prevalent and you will find yourself in those ruts if you don't have the right people around you. And that's, that's like my biggest praise is finding the right people around you and you have the right team when lose or draw, you need the right people around you. And, and that also helps with your mental strength and your, your fortitude. So all that combined, you know, stress ages you. So if you can find a, a stress, the most stress-free environment as possible and you conduct yourself as healthy as possible, you know, I would assume that's, my, my take on why I'm able to compete like I do is just the simple fact that I don't partake. And, you know, people can look back 20 years from now and go, oh, I remember when I was at this concert and I, we were all shit-faced. Don't remember how the night went. I'm, I won't have those kind of memories, but I will have memories where no one else is going to have where I go, hey, check this out. Remember when I was on pay-per-view in front of millions of people and I knocked this dude out, made a highlight out of this guy. Remember this guy was talking shit and I got to punch him in the face and not get in trouble, you know, stuff like that. So I, I guess I prefer the... Uh, the latter of the two. And I think that's what keeps me young. Yeah. And looking at your, you know, your training and whatnot, can, is there a bit, is there a huge difference training for bare knuckle boxing versus MMA? And while you're trained, do you still, do you still roll with the guys? Or are you still just focusing on your bare knuckle boxing? So, yeah. So the last seven years, I've just focused on boxing. 
when I switched back over to BKFC, because over in UK and United Kingdom, they do what they call Victorian style, which is proper stand up. There is no clenching. As soon as you clench, you break. And uh, here in America, we, you know, Dave Feldman really is big on the clench, really big on dirty boxing. So here now, since I've been back in the States, I've gone back to my wrestling roots, but there's no reason to get on the ground and grapple. You know, where this is going to partake as far as grappling would be Greco. So we've really gone back to our Greco roots, wall work, Greco, you know, throwing people around upper body stuff. And uh, a lot of these guys that come into it, you know, if they don't have wrestling in their background and they're not practicing it, the quickest way to lose your gas tank is if someone ties up with you and starts moving you around, you know, and these, these cats don't get it. Uh, probably the best, the smartest guy that I know in the BKFC right now in the heavyweight division is Joey Beltron and Joey, you know, it's my homeboy. I like Joey, you know, we're probably going to end up fighting, but you know, Joey's smart and you watch what he did to Sam. Sam looked good for one round their last fight. And then uh, after, after that one round, Sam was looking for an oxygen tank. He was getting thrown around by a guy who came off having COVID, who was sick, who lost 20 plus pounds in camp, was a shell of himself. But that's how, and, I, and I'm not putting words in Joey's mouth, but that's how much, in my opinion, how much he did not fear Sam. That, that same, like he was not afraid of him, that he came in lacking cardio, lacking his physical size and strength. And he still ragged off Sam Shoemaker, you know? So, and Sam's just this traditional guy that doesn't have much of a fighting background. He only has a little bit that he has and he's not a grappler. And you watch Joey who I love Joey, but Joey's not a physical specimen. He's not super strong. He doesn't manhandle people, but he does have a gas tank. And he basically at round three was basically manhandling ragdolling Sam Shoemaker. So that shows you how important that upper body Greco wrestling is in bare knuckle in BKFC. Awesome. And, you know, I do want to talk about your opponent, but first of all, talk about uh, bare knuckle boxing. I mean, I think we all can agree that it really, the sport really took off. I mean, the organization took off huge quickly. And do you feel there, one of the reasons why it has so quickly is because people just like to see guys just, just start throwing like, and, and I think it's one of the most exciting um, there's been so many exciting fights being thrown on and, and just seeing guys, just, I mean, they're just bleeding and gushing blood. I mean, do you think that's one of the many main reasons why it's taken off so quick? Well, of course. I mean, let's think about it. MMA, it's so damn watered down now that, you know, you, you will have your quality top, you know, marquee fights, but uh, for the most part, like MMA, if, you know, let's, let's go with game breed, game, game breed fighters, bare knuckle MMA, right? Well, that proves that, that right there. And I love that. I love George. I think it's a great idea. He, you know, he's trying to do something new, but it's stupid. Like bare knuckle MMA. As soon as a guy doesn't want to throw hands, they can grapple. They can take you to the ground. They can do there. It takes out the striking. So as far as bare knuckle fighting goes, like the whole point is that you have to stand, you have to punch. And the way Dev Feldman runs the BKFC is if you run and you don't fight, you're going to get cut. And, you know, there's a lot more superficial wounds in bare knuckle boxing because it's bone on bone from the start to start to end. And a lot of people are like, well, you know, MMA has elbows and they have shins. I'm like, yeah. How many times you get kicked in the face? And the fight keeps going. How many times you get elbowed in the face and it keeps going? Maybe three, four, maybe one or two, and it's done. This is right from the very beginning to the end. You're getting bone-on-bone -bone action, ripping the skin, ripping the face, and you have to have action. So at the end of the day, anybody that, that likes combat sports, if they watch bare knuckle boxing one time, and all you need to do is have one or two good fights on that card, they'll be hooked. It's a complete different model, just a complete different animal. Of course. And – one of, I mean, even the girl, like, and not to criticize women, I mean, um, it's just, just saying though, with the women, some of the female fights, they're just, they're bringing it too. And, and, um, I don't know that one girl, I'm trying to think of her name. Um, geez. I think killer B or something like that. Her, her next name. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that girl, man, she's just bringing it. I mean, just coming in and you see a lot of MMA, uh, fighters transitioning into bare knuckle boxing. They're like, Hey, no, I want to stand with someone. I don't want someone to cross sniff me the whole fight. I want, I want to stand up there and fight. Um, and it's crazy how many fighters are transitioning and saying, yeah, I, I like it. It's good. And they like it. And to kind of add on what you're saying about 
uh, standing there and fighting. I think it's great because when you look, when you watch a lot of MMA fights, unfortunately what happens is when a guy gets elbowed in the head or someone just gets a clean shot above the eyebrow and cut them open, they're gushing blood. They stop the fight or it's too, too, uh, too bad, but you look at bare knuckle Fox and, and, and it doesn't, it doesn't seem like it matters. They're just like, let's go. <laughs> yeah. You know, well, you got uh, the ringside doctor, Dr. Mozzie is, is, one of the best in the game and you know as long as it's not going to hurt your long-term health or vision or something like that they're gonna let the fight go and you know as far as women are concerned you know what i would say with boxing and mma if you are a true fight fan you'll like watching women you know why women are more technical women throw more technicality more precise shots they don't have the power that men have where they can just be flailing shit and if it lands it's a wrap you know us men me included uh, you know, we get a little bit complacent with our power. So we're not as technical, not as sharp. And the women are super sharp. So you put that, the sharpness that these women have, and you put it in the bare knuckle arena, you're now putting bone on bone, tearing flesh with precision. You know, uh, the one I can think of is Taylor, Killer B. She's great. Um, you know, think about Christina Ferreira. That girl, is a monster. And there's a reason why all these girls are avoiding her. You know, they're going to have a 125 pound tournament and you might right now, I'm saying it right now, mark my words, Christina Ferrer will come out on top. There's a lot of tough girls. Don't get me wrong. There's a lot of tough girls in there. I just think that Christina Ferrer is just a step ahead of all the other girls. And doesn't mean the other girls aren't badasses as well. You know, look at what Britton Hart did. I mean, these girls are all looking awesome. And if you appreciate the, the technicality of fighting and the brutality Watching a women fight is probably one of the best fights you can have besides heavyweight fights, in my opinion. Of course, of course. Now, I do want to kind of move on here. So let's talk about your opponent, uh, you know, Sam Shoemaker, or as you want to call him, running man, Sam. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, so with this fight, I know it's been, you know, it's been booked a couple times, you know, just things haven't worked out. What, ha- what has been the story there? Has he been pulling out of the fight or did it just didn't work out? What happened? Well, we had, we've officially been slotted three times now. Uh, there was an unofficial time that he just basically turned down the fight, which he'll sit here and say he didn't. But, I mean, I ha- I'm not the guy to pull up records, but, I mean, I I'm, I'm directly speak to Dave and Nate, and I mean, I'm listening exactly when they talk to him. So, at the end of the day, this guy, you know, he just, you know, he comes from not much of a fighting background, uh, he really, he's one of those guys that just thinks he's more than he is. Every time he's fought any top tier guy, anybody above a B-level fighter, he's lost. And I mean, the guy's shown that he has no class. He doesn't shake hands. He doesn't congratulate, you know, um, he storms out of the ring. You know, Kenzie Morrison, one of my boys, he beat him in a glove boxing match, just beat his ass all over the ring. He's stumbling and bumbling. And then he complained when they stopped the fight. It's like, dude, you're getting your ass handed to you. You couldn't stay off the canvas. And then, uh, you know, same thing, Joey Beltron. Beltron was maybe 50% of what Joey usually is. And Joey beat his ass. And then he stormed out of the ring, didn't, didn't congratulate Joey. Um, you know, and I, I can go back to, if you look at my last fight with Frank Tate, Frank Tate was an underdog. Frank Tate should have never belonged. On paper, he shouldn't belong in that same ring with me. On that night, it's a fight. Any given night, anybody can win. And when Frank Tate just beat my ass all over the ring, uh, you know, at the end of the fight, you know, I got to give him his props. Like, damn, bro, you you, you got me. You got me. And then after the fight, take pictures of the son, congratulate him, and and we're close. You know, we may fight again, but we have that mutual respect. So, and Sam doesn't have that. You know, he's just like a spoiled little kid. And uh, if he don't get his way, he acts like a little bitch. And, And I... I usually don't talk shit. Most people are like, oh, you talk shit. No, I I talk shit about guys that pull out of fights, guys that talk big and they pull out of fights. Like, you know, let's just be honest. My last fight, I fought Frank Tate because a guy named Dylan Kleckler pulled out. Supposedly tore his hamstring, you know, he couldn't fight. But we saw him the night of the fight walk around just fine. And he, you know, had to talk shit online and say, well, the way you fought Tate, I should have just fought you. If you say that, man, then obviously you were afraid. You were afraid. You weren't at 100%, which no fighter is when they go into a fight, but you were being a bitch. You were afraid. So, yeah, at the end of the day, man, Sam pulled out, and uh, the, the first time wasn't his fault or mine. It was Kansas. They shut it down the day before the weigh-ins. Uh, the next time we were supposed to fight in Kansas, he pulled out the week of the fight, the Monday of the fight, because he got covid now, we all have to operate within protocols with this pandemic going on. You know, 
and we have to stay within the confines of our team and be professionals. This motherfucker went out and went hunting on a hunting party with his friends and people, you know, a week before a fight. Dumbass gets COVID. You know what that means? It means you're not professional. He's like, oh, I never pulled out. Bullshit. You went out. You were stupid. You didn't. You weren't acting as a professional. You caught the shit. So, yeah, you can't fight. You pulled out because you were sick. It is what it is. And to this day, he claims that he didn't pull out. That just shows you the immaturity, like the lack of professionalism this guy has. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, I mean, most people can see that I've been ripping his ass online with these little memes. It's just being funny. But at the end of the day, also getting the truth out there. This this dude pulls out of fights. And, you know, we heard through the grapevine that this dude was going to pull out again to an undisclosed injury. So I was like, you know what? Fuck this. Like he signed the contract. If you sign the contract, you need to fight. So I just put it out there. And I, you know, I obviously have a, a lot more people that follow me than him and like me more than him. And so I'm going to get it out there. Let people know that if this cat don't show up to fight, he's straight up. He's a pussy. He's scared. And he says, oh, you're a bum. Like this dude's like, a, he's a special kind of stupid. Like if you go on the internet, bare knuckle fighting is so new that you have like five different ranking places that have rankings, like, like records. Box Rec has me at the worst at five and five. OK, their shit's so wrong that if you were to pull it up and look at it every and this is what Sam runs off of. Oh, you're five and five and you fought all debut fighters. I'm like, first of all, you're an idiot. Everybody I fought over in Europe had at minimum five fights. Some of the guys are 10 and 0, but it's OK. Like he can believe that, you know, if it's on the Internet, it's real. Right. Well, let's go to another website. They have made eight and two. That's wrong. I'm seven and three. Go to another website. They got me at six and four. Like. It doesn't matter. Like, I don't really give a fuck what all these websites say because all these people are so new in the sport. They don't know their ass from the hole in the ground. They're all just learning the sport. You know, I am by far the most experienced American in America in bare knuckle fighting. I've been doing it longer than anybody. The only other guy that's even in my realm is Eric Olson. And he has close, I believe, equal fights that I do. But he's just, you know, he does his own thing over in Europe. He doesn't want to fight in America. So at some point, that's going to play against you because America's the big leagues. You got to come to America to see all the talent. And even though they're new, they still have better athletes, have better fighters. So at some point, the, the, the torch is going to be passed. So when that torch is passed, which that's what BKFC is doing, they're taking the torch now, and they are the big dog. They are what I would consider the UFC out of bare knuckle fighting. And, uh, you know, it is what it is. So this guy, he's just he's just misled on what I would consider ignorance. And he's just literally that stupid. Like me, I would rather give somebody the benefit of the doubt and, and over compensate and over, you know, achieve and, and go, God, they're really good and really think they're better than they are. And prepare for that. Then go, oh, fuck, this dude's a bum, you know. But by the way this dude acts and by how he he responds and what he does and how he pulls out and doesn't show up. And, you know, at the end of the day, I think he's I, I honestly think he's afraid. I think he knows. I mean, he he goes around thinking that he's the toughest heavyweight puncher. He couldn't even hurt Joey Beltran, who was 50 percent. And Joey would tell you the same thing. He was at 50 percent. Couldn't he yeah, cut him? That was it. And it was and that was stopped. That cut with the cut was stopped after the first. So it wasn't even bleeding like the dude literally believes his own hype. You know, I always I always say, like, don't drink your own Kool-Aid. Be careful. Don't drink your own Kool-Aid, you know, and this motherfucker is the type of guy that reads his own clippings, drinks his own Kool-Aid and literally thinks he's the man. And you've got literally four fighters that beat his ass that were that are higher level guys like A.J. Arnold, uh, Kenzie Morrison, uh, Joey Beltran. All these guys beat him. You know, I think Maurice Jackson beat him. Watch that fight. Maurice Jackson dropped him like what the fuck. But he was he had a little name going and. and you already know how these promotions go. You, you're getting a little hype behind a certain guy, you know, like a shoemaker. So they're going to they're going to push it. He's going to get those squeaky wins, you know, the split decisions. It's cool. So he just he's, you know, I, I guess the easiest way to say it, he's like that kid at school. That's a tough guy. And, yeah, he's won a couple fights and, you know, he's tough, but he ain't found a tough guy yet. Like, yeah, Joey's tough, but Joey's not me. Joey don't hit hard. Joey just pity patters the fuck out of you until you can't breathe. And I don't disrespect that. That's a fucking, that's a quality to have. But you stand in front of me and I hit you, I guarantee you he don't take three shots. He three, three shots, three solid connects, and I'm going to fucking end his life straight up. And if he does try to get up, I'm going to fuck him up more. I'm going to, I will make him drink out of a straw for at least six weeks. You watch, trust me, watch how the, watch him. I mean, the best he, he was getting ready for a world title. And look how he looked against Joy Beltron. Head up high, arms out like, bro, you're not ready. You're not ready. So it's cool. Like I said in the beginning of this show, I was the same thing, you know, beware the old man and the young man's game. Beware. 
because that means motherfucker, I know what I'm doing and I'm sticking around because I got what it takes. And, you know, not trying to talk too much shit, but at the end of the day, I'm going to fuck Sam up. I'm going to fuck him up and, and I'm going to clown him. I'm going to clown him because he, he's an asshole. He's on there talking shit. I'm a bum. I'm a trash can. He, he's talking shit about guys that he doesn't even know. And he's acting like these guys are nobodies. One of the guys, Daniel Pottermore, who's a tough son of a bitch. I knocked him out in the first round in the UK. But little did I know I was getting ready to leave. Well, I knew I was getting ready to leave, but they were getting ready to cut me. And uh, I knocked him out in the first round. Watch it. It's on. It's BKB took down all six of my knockout wins. They only left up the four, lo four losses, which two of them shouldn't have been no contest. Watch it. Count it. It's a 22 second count. It's only supposed to be 18 seconds. The dude was out under around the ropes. Then I went in to get him. And he thumb punched me. Boom! My eye blows up. Do they call it, you know, a thumb poke, you know, disqualification or whatever, a no contest? No, of course not. Oh, well, Josh loses. Then after I go to their doctors in the UK, their doctors say, "Yo, you had your eye. My ocular nerve was pinched. The only way that happens is something to protrude in your eye." So, but you know what? That motherfucker's four and one. I believe four and one, five and one. And he's the British heavyweight champion. So you want to call that dude a bum? I think Daniel Potterborn knocks Sam Shoemaker out. So careful what you talk, bro. At the end of the day, you should do your due diligence and check your homework out. That's how I feel. So sorry, went on a rant. No worries. So first round, second round, or third round? I honestly think that uh, it'll be second round. Uh, you know, I, I have seven knockouts. All seven knockouts are under three minutes. So, uh, I, I, you never know, man, this kid, you know, if he's cocky enough and stupid enough to stand in front of me to where I can touch him, it could be in the first round. So, you know, I, I think he's tough. I really do. I think, I think, I think Sam's tough. I think I've seen him get his, his, his ass cracked and he keeps getting up. He keeps getting, get, getting up, but that's not bare knuckle. AJ knocked him down with a, with a flash uppercut, but AJ wasn't putting the pressure on him. AJ was just clowning him, you know, doing his slick thing. I call it the dancing bear. AJ, Ar AJ Arnold can be a slick dancing bear or he can be a beast. The fight that he fought uh, Sam in, he was being slick. He wasn't, he wasn't going for the KO. He was just being slick and he still knocked his ass down. So, and we know AJ hits hard. So I just think nobody, the only person that's gotten his ass would have been Kenzie Morrison. That was with 10 ounce gloves and Kenzie just beat his ass all over the ring. So imagine Kenzie times two with bare knuckles. I'm bigger than Kenzie. I'm pretty sure I hit harder. If not, it's equal. All I got to do is hit as equally hard. So I really think it's either the first or the second. And you know, hey, if it goes five, I'm ready for five. You know, but he's going to be a fucked up mess, and I'm going to literally make him drink out of a straw for at least six weeks. Which that means I'm going to break his jaw. For the people that don't know what that means. You said it all, man. Uh, and 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 after this, uh, after this, after this fight, what? is the plan for the rest of 2021 are you hoping to get another fight in by the end of the year or you want to take the time off what would you like well that's really going to be up to bksc i guess we got to see how you know how bad the fight goes you know it's a fight like i said anybody can beat anybody any given day so it's not it's not out of the realm of sam beating me you know i in the back of my head you know i could get cut you know there's things that could happen but at the end of the day i think aj arnold is going to get uh joy beltron first so with that being said my goal is knock out Sam Shoemaker, then get Dylan Kleckler to get his little pretty boy ass in the ring and back up his fucking talk, knock his ass out, and then go for the belt. And it'll probably be against AJ Arnold's because I, I, I have a feeling that Adam Arnold's would beat Joey this time. He already beat him once, but it was due to a cut. I think he'll actually beat him straight up the second time they meet. It's just styles make fights. Excellent, Josh. You said it all, man. I appreciate you again taking the time to come on here. I know it's getting late for you, so I'll let you go here. And uh, again, uh, good luck with your...